JavaScript arrays have lots of different methods that help with their manipulation. There are two methods in particular that we'll focus on in this video. The first is the filter method. And the filter method lets us look at a JavaScript array, create a threshold or condition, and then return only those items that meet that condition. So take a look at line 12. Here we have a simple array where each entry is a number. If we wanted to return only those numbers greater than 50, we do the following. Create a new line and type var data greater than 50. And set that equal to data.filter and open and close parentheses. So here we're invoking the filter method of the arrays because data is an array. Now we pass in as the argument a function to perform on each of the elements. So function, open and close parentheses, and curly brackets. And the argument for this function is entry. You can call it whatever you want, I'll call mine entry, but it represents the current item that is being looked at within the array. What we're going to return here is a true or false. Returning true will return that item into data greater than 50. Returning false will just skip it. So on a new line, we'll type return entry greater than 50. And what this does is it looks at this expression and it says the entry, one of these numbers, is it greater than 50? If it is, return true, which will then return the element into a new array. So now on a new line, we'll type console.log. And before we log out this variable, we'll create a string, call it data greater than 50, and put a colon after it. And then outside of this, comma, and then data greater than 50. You'll see in a moment what this does. Create a new line and head to the browser. I've already loaded it in the window and notice that the console is open at the bottom. Refresh here on the console tab. Data greater than 50, this is the string that we created, and the space is the comma. And this is a new array that has all of those items whereby the threshold is true. So there's no number here less than 50. What if we wanted to do this with an array that has objects, like the donuts array at line 18? Well, let's try it. We'll create a new variable called var donuts greater than 50, and we'll set that equal to, let's just copy what we have here lines 13 through 15 and paste and change data because that's the name of the array we were using to donuts. And before we head to the browser, console.log and copy what we have at line 16, paste it and then change data to donuts for both the string and the reference. This array has objects within it. So in order to grab the values from these objects, we need to access their keys. So within this particular filter method, we're going to do entry dot whatever the property name is. So the values are stored within the value property. So entry dot value is greater than 50. Head back to the browser and refresh. And now we have an array of objects whereby the value properties are greater than 50. I can click this disclosure triangle and it'll appear below. Click the disclosure triangle again and you'll get the key and value for the object. Now that's the filter method. Let's head back to the code. The other array method that we'll want to take a look at is the map method. Now the map method allows you to perform transformations on arrays and return a new array with those transformations. If you take a look at the array at line 18 through 31, we have objects that have the property key and the property value. But really we're talking about donuts for key and then quantity for value. So what if we wanted to create a new array that had instead of key as a property, donuts? and instead of value as a property, quantity. Well, here's how we do that. At the bottom of the code, we'll create a new line and type var reformatted donuts. Set that equal to donuts.map and open and close parentheses. Now the map method will look at the array and then allows us to perform functions on it and it will return the result of performing those functions on all of the items in the array, not just some of them, it does it on all of them. And there is no choice here to conditionally apply it to some and not the other. We have to transform all of them. So now within the argument, we'll pass an anonymous function, function, parentheses, and curly brackets. Now head to the parentheses and pass the argument entry. This is the current item. And what we want to do here is we want to return, we'll use curly bracket notation, that has a property called donut, colon, and that will be entry.key. So we're grabbing the current item, which is entry, and we're accessing the key property. And then as well, it has a property called quantity, and that's entry.value. Save it, let's put a semicolon here at the end of the return statement, and outside of this declaration, reformatted donuts.foreach, 
open and close parentheses, create a function, function, open and close parentheses, entry, and open and close curly brackets. So we're using the for each method to loop through this array, and we're going to print the contents within this anonymous function, console.log entry. Save it and let me comment out these other console logs because we don't need to see them. Okay, and head to the browser and refresh. And let me make the console a little bit bigger. So now you see that this array consists of objects that have the property donut and quantity. So the map method allowed us to take an array and return new objects that had more meaningful names if we're taking a look at them. The computer really doesn't care. It's really up to the person who's programming. And consistently in this course, I will use key and value as properties. That's really what we're talking about are key value pairs. But in your own code, you might want to use something more meaningful according to what you're working with and what you want to visualize.